Hello, friends. My name is Dr. Puru Dawan, and today I will tell you about diet for kidney failure or CKD patients. In a patient with CKD, waste materials like creatinine and urea start accumulating. Because the kidneys are unable to perform their function to excrete these waste materials out of the body. This results in the accumulation of urea and creatinine in the blood of the patient. This accumulation of waste materials causes different symptoms and makes a person feel sick. Now, in a patient with kidney failure, we have to control these materials. We have to keep them at lower levels. For that, food plays an important role because whatever we eat, it causes direct or indirect effects on our body. Suppose a kidney patient consumes proteins like eggs, chicken, and mutton, what will happen? The protein consumption will increase creatinine because creatinine is a waste protein produced by the muscles during muscle metabolism. Now you can make necessary changes in your diet regarding protein so that creatinine levels in your blood can be controlled. So I personally advise protein to a CKD patient depending upon the body's requirement. If the total protein in the albumin serum is in the normal range, the protein diet is advised. If the levels of TP and albumin are in the subrange, then light protein is advised. So, basically, protein intake in a kidney failure should depend upon the requirement of the body. As a low protein food option, you can add pulses and milk to your diet, but you should strictly avoid mutton, chicken, or any animal protein. As I told you, extra protein can further damage your kidneys. Now, let's move to urea. You can control urea by controlling the amount of lipid, or you can say fat. First, try to understand. Urea is a waste, which is produced by the liver during digestion. So, if a patient wants to control urea, one has to avoid all unnecessary heavy lipids so that life doesn't have to work extra to produce urea in excess. Cut down extra oil, cheese, and butter from your diet and take only small quantities for cooking. So, till now you have learned that creatinine and urea can be controlled by diet. Another important factor here is amount of potassium in your diet. Potassium is an electrolyte and the imbalance of this electrolyte can lead to cardiac arrest. That's why we suggest our patients to avoid high potassium food items in their diet like coconut, avocado, kiwi, green vegetables, dates, dry fruits and potato, etc. But we know potassium is present in almost every food item. So how will you avoid it? You need to eat food items that carry low or moderate amount of potassium. Since potassium is a vast concept, I will make a full separate video on this soon, where I will explain this in more detailed manner. Now let's move to water. How much water should be taken by a kidney patient? This is a tough question to answer. The reason is that fluid requirement varies individually. Some person lives in a hot climate where the fluid requirement is high, as they lose fluid through sweating and urine. Some patient lives in a cold climate where the fluid requirement is low. If we will give the same amount of fluid to both the patients one time, in a patient living in a hot climate, it will be less, and for a patient living in a cold climate, it will be extra. An extra fluid will cause swelling and other complications. That's why it is recommended to take fluid as per the requirement of the body. If you are feeling thirst, take one cup, 100 ml of water. If you again feel it, then again take one cup of water. By taking small quantities in good frequency, helps the body to stay hydrated and taking a sufficient amount of fluid. The kidney produces enough urine to excrete creatinine and urea. Now you know that fluid should be taken in a significant amount neither scanty nor excess. And this sufficient amount is told by our lips and throat. If lips are dry that means the body needs fluid. Now to control waste material in the body. There is another way and that is the kidneys, by increasing kidneys function. We can increase the excretion of creatinine and urea better than before, resulting in a lower level of creatinine in KFT reports. Confused? Let me explain. Kidney never losses its function automatically. There is always a cause behind that. In majority of patients, it is high blood pressure or diabetes. If we keep control of blood pressure and blood sugar, Keeping it in normal limits helps the patient to stop the progression of kidney failure. That means no elevation of creatinine level as no new damage is happening in kidney because the cause of kidney failure is in control. Now, in the second step, we have to increase the functioning of kidney, and that is to filter out waste material from blood. 
Before that, we have to ask the question to ourselves, can the kidney increase its function? And the answer is yes. Let's take it with an example. In a person whose one kidney got damaged because of injury or sepsis can survive without any increase in his creatinine levels. How? This happens because his kidney can increase its function. It takes the functions of a lost kidney naturally. That means if we take care of the kidney properly in a patient with kidney failure. By increasing kidney's functions, creatinine levels can be brought lower. So, at Trias with the help of herbs we aim to increase kidney functions. Let me show you some examples. You can see a few reports of our patients who have experienced a downfall in creatinine levels in just a few months of our treatment. So, I hope you could understand how your diet plays an important role in improving your health when you are a kidney failure patient or CKD patient. If you still have any queries related to this then you can directly call us on the number flashing on your screen or you can directly write to us in the comment section. I will be back with another informative video soon. Till then, you guys stay healthy, stay fit. Thank you for watching.